Hey, welcome to the Electronics Lab. In this video, I'm going to use LT Spice to simulate this circuit. I'm going to simulate the voltage and the current. And remember that in AC circuits, both Ohm's law and Kirchhoff's laws hold true. And I want to use this simulation to confirm that. And I want to use this simulation to confirm that. Now I should note that this circuit comes from my website, electronics.ca. So check out the links in the description to get more details. Now let's jump over to LT Spice. All right, we'll start with a blank schematic and start dropping in the components that we need. First thing I'm gonna put in is the voltage source. I will configure it in a second, but I'm just gonna drop it in for now. I have a couple of resistors in parallel. And then I'm going to add a third resistor right here. And I'll explain why in a sec. Wire things up. Can't forget the reference point. Now let's put the values in for these, these resistors. Now this resistor here, I'm going to make a very small resistor and I need it for measurement purposes. So I don't want it to affect the circuit. I'm gonna make it one nano ohm, but I do need it to make some measurements. Now let's configure the voltage source. I need to click on advanced to get the sine wave. Click on sine wave. I have no DC offset. I have an amplitude of 10 volts. Frequency, I didn't actually specify the frequency. Let's just pick something arbitrary, a thousand hertz, and I don't need to configure those other parameters. And I need the simulation directive. I'm gonna look at the transient response if I can look at the, the signals over a brief period of time. I'm going to have a step size of 0.1 microfarads, so I've got like 10,000 points per cycle. And let's do it for a like five cycles. So that's going to be five milliseconds. It's one millisecond per cycle for a one kilohertz signal. Drop that there. Now let's simulate. Okay, so I definitely want the node voltage here. So I'll click on that node voltage and you can see there's my 10 volt sine wave. And I also want the current. I could click on the voltage source here and I'll do that. But take a look at the direction that the arrow is pointing. It's actually pointing in the opposite direction that I want. And so you can see that the voltage and the current are out of phase with each other, but we know that they're not. So what's happened is that the current orientation for the reading here is the opposite polarity that I want. So instead, I'm going to use this resistor that I've put in here, this one nano ohm resistor that I'm using for measurement. You'll also note that the arrow is pointing in the wrong direction. I want the arrow pointing to the right, so that the current's going to be in phase with the voltage. In the SPICE simulator, resistors have polarity. Obviously in the real world, resistors don't have polarity, but in the simulator they do. So I need to change the orientation of this resistor and that's a simple thing for me to do. I can go up here to move, select the resistor. Now, if I hit control R a couple of times, flips the resistor around and now you can see that the arrow is pointing in the correct direction. So I flip the resistor around, but before the newer orientation takes effect, I need to re-simulate now I can select my voltage node, I can select my currents, and you can see that they are in phase with each other. The current is right on top of the voltage, so we can't see both of them. I'm gonna change the scale over here a little bit. So now we can see both the voltage and the current. The voltage and current are now in phase with each other. I mean, they were always in phase with each other, but now we can see that on the graph. And at every point, the ratio of the voltage over the current is going to be the same. If I take a look at the peak, I've got a 10 volt peak, and a 200 milliamp current peak. 10 volts over 200 milliamps gives me 50 ohms. Same thing, get the same values for the negative peak. I can pick any value over here and the ratio of the voltage to the current is going to be 50 ohms. And that totally makes sense because the equivalent resistance of R1 and R2 that are in parallel is going to be 50 ohms. So the equivalent resistance that this voltage source sees is a 50 ohms. So that more or less confirms Ohm's law for this particular circuit. Now, what about Kirchhoff's current law? Well, if I go here and I click on R1 to measure the current of R1, and I click on R2 to measure the current of R2, well, you can see R1 and R2 got put on top of each other, so they are the exact same currents. I'm going to get rid of the voltage here. I don't need it anymore. And now we can see that R3, we can see R3, and we can see R1 and R2 that are, R1 and R2 are right on top of each other. 
the peak of R1 and R2, well, first of all, they're both R1, R2, and R3 are in phase with each other. This totally makes sense. It's a purely resistive network. There is going to be no phase shift introduced. And to confirm Kirchhoff's current law, we would need to see that R1 plus R2 is equal to R3. Well, what is the peak value of R1? Let's put a cursor here, take it to the peak, and you can see the value of the peak is basically 100 milliamps. For R3, that value is basically 200 milliamps. So R1 peak is 100 milliamps. R2 peak is the same as R1, so also 100 milliamps. 100 milliamps plus 100 milliamps gives me the 200 milliamps of R3. It's going to be the exact same thing at the negative. At the negative, R3 is at minus 200 milliamps. R1 is at minus 100 milliamps. Minus 100 plus minus 100 gives me minus 200 milliamps. So at those two peaks, Kirchhoff's current law does still hold true. And you'll find if you pick any point in time on this graph, Kirchhoff's current law is going to hold true. Well, as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, this example comes from my website, and you can find the link right here. This site hosts an open source textbook on AC and DC circuits, and along with the book, you can find more video tutorials as well as practice problems to help you with your learning and understanding of AC and DC circuits. As a child, I was obsessed with the difference between sine and cosine. Now I know it was just a phase. Thanks for watching. See you next time.